you know, lad coming in, you know, when has a dude that looks like me <laughs> caught for that many touchdowns in an SEC sketch? Like, I mean, dude, and if he would stay up, he'd have a few more. Right? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, dude's, dude's incredible. Um, and we all love football, and, and, um, and we're all Monk's helping us, and the coaches are doing such a good stuff. Yeah. Good job of helping us understand the ball. So now we can play together. Stetson, look, last year you won the national championship, favorite to do so again. Now a Heisman Trophy finals. It still seems like people try to take away from your game, though, and diminish your importance. Just how do you respond to people that keep on doubting you? I mean, I. I really, um, you know, people are going to, we were actually, us quarterback first, we were just talking, you know, people are going to have opinions, and, you know, um, it's not my job to, to do that. You know, I've got enough on my plate. I, I walk on here, so i got to focus on doing my job. Otherwise, you know, I just don't think that I'm going to do it as well. Um, but as far as replying to people who say whatever they say about something that they don't really know anything about, I don't really Part of that, you know, when you talk about storylines, you know, for some reason, you're kind of the, the guy that gets the wrath of, oh, Hendon Hooker should be there. You know, I'm sure you've seen some of that. Is that kind of along the same lines, of the, just ignoring that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, also, I don't think it's fair to Hendon. Um, you know, he's a great player. I mean, I, I don't think it should be spoke up in that, in that light. I think he should be getting respect for the year that he had. And, you know, not what could have been, but what was, you know, it was, you know, he almost, not single-handedly, but was a main factor in, like, that program changing course, you know, so uh, that, that's always, you know, silly to me, um, and as far as me getting hate for it, I, it doesn't bother me, really, because, you know, I didn't make that call, Sure. so... Does it at all provide, like, I know you try to ignore a lot of that stuff and you can't read and, and hear everything, but does that provide a little extra motivation or do you not get any more motivation? Which, uh, which, which part? Just the, the people constantly doubting you, the, the head and the hooker conversation and all that? I'd say it probably keeps me humble. Um, I don't go to the workout with a, you know, a copy of a tweet. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> it probably should, like, it's almost more of like a culture thing. Um, and I mean that in the way that those, you know, thousands of, of uh, you're not good enough that you talk about, I kind of seeped into my brain. I'm not saying that I'm not good enough, but saying like, all right, you're not there yet. Because I remember what it was like to not be there then, and it did kind of suck. And so now, it's just in my blood, well, we're still not there yet, so we're, we're, we're still keep going. Stetson, you're here largely because of the way you play against the best teams in Oregon and LSU. What is it about you that you can distract and show the work against those teams? What is it about just maximizing your ability in those games that make it really easy to play? Well, I, I will. No, I won't say that. But, um. <laughs> you could say it. <laughs> um. I don't know, man. I, I, there's, you know, my uncle always told me, or not, well, not always, but he told me once a few weeks ago. Um, I want to get it right. I said, if, if you don't have any choice, it's easy. So, figure out a way. Are you a guy that watched Heisman Trophy ceremonies for me? No, I watched the highlights of the guys who. One, more so than the actual the ceremony. Anyone in particular you remember? Yeah. Uh, Johnny Football. You know? <laughs> Dude was a rock star. He was king of the world. So I was that guy. Stetson, talk about Coach Buck in the last couple of years playing for him. He's an air eight guy. He's made it work with some pro style stuff. Just kind of talk about playing for him. Yeah, you know, obviously, you, you know, butt heads. Um, you know, he benched me, and so that hurt. Um, but now we're, we're cool, and, you know, I think we're better off for that for sure, you know, going through all those up and ups and downs, trials and tribulations. And, I mean, the dude, 
the dude just knows how to prepare and knows how to call plays. Um, you know, and I know he said in a lot of his speeches, he, he, he's um, you know kind of giving the credit to other people, and you know, rightfully so. We've got a lot of good coaches who do a lot of good things, but I mean, he's he started changing what he has. intense and he expects you to do right and sometimes we don't see that the same way but at the end of the day like I know his goal no matter what bar none is for us to score points. That's his job and he does that he does that very well. And when you when you can play for a guy like that, um, you got trust in the game right now. Question is what you tell me play call question because I don't really know what goes all into doing it, but um, I just know what he calls it. It's, it's, you mentioned getting benched. How hard was that for you to overcome mentally? I mean, you've been doubted plenty of times, but I imagine you get that taste of being a starter and then you go back to being you know, not quite good enough. How hard was it for you to get Well, the, the, the biggest issue with that whole thing was that I was not good enough. And that was the biggest thing. Um, but then that was also a lot easier because then I could just go get better. And so, um, I mean, it was difficult, um, but at least I knew why. Tough no question for you. Most of this back, maybe 11 days from yeah. the trial, mean, you look at that photo to where you are now. What are some of the things that can be done? Um, I don't know, man. I still see the same kid. You know, he's pretty stubborn. Um, he's a jerk. Uh, <laughs> but he knew that. You know, he knew that. that hat was rocking the yeah. energy. That was a falling move. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, you know, people, people ask me a lot, do you ever see yourself here in this situation? Could you ever imagine? Um, I know, not really, but I also never really thought about it, yes or no, in any way. Just, I knew what we had to do that day. So I just tried to always do that. What's it been like getting to know Caleb Williams from the West Coast? Oh, well, I really haven't been. I got here two. I got here around 11 with the but we ate with our families. So, um, he was on his official visit when he came to Athens. And I can't remember if I hosted him. He said you hosted him. Okay, yeah, I hosted him. I knew we hung out for, for a while. Um, but he, you know, he chilled dude. Baller, the football player. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited about him. That's, you know, besides the, the honor of this award and all that stuff, I'm really excited about just getting to know these guys and who they are. Dallas fans and media probably know more about, about each other than we do. You know, we're worried about what they do, what their room is on, what they are. Reference, he's a baller. You watched a lot of his plays or highlights, or go back and watch a game of him as the season's going. I've watched a few plays of him. Um, not set down. Just, oh, I watched the UCLA USC highlights. Um, that was good. So, I enjoyed that. When was the last time? When was the last time you broke out that hat? <laughs> so the uh, the fade that you get, it's the Quavius fade. What do you make of the, the discussion around that? It seems like you seem to play better when you have that fade. Are you gonna get it before? Uh, well, I purposely didn't wear it the uh, SEC championship game because I don't want to become a bit. You know, if I don't, I can't. And so, thank goodness that's out of the way. Um, but no, dude, I just thought it was cool. I always thought it was cool. Um, and the dudes loved it. Uh, so I might, who knows? Um, but it was just, I mean, it was, it was a thing before fall camp where some of the dudes were shaving their head and it was like, we got 11 days in a hotel, nobody's gonna see me. 
And so I did it, and uh, I think it was Sawyer who came up and was just he said, uh, "Let me paint you up, man." And I said, "All right, yeah, you can." And uh, so I let him, and I was like, oh. <laughs> And I had, I had a necklace in too. Granddaddy's rolling over his face. But, um, <laughs> and then played well against Oregon. Um, and then it seemed to be when I didn't have it, I started playing bad. And when I did have it, I started playing good. And so I started doing it for the big games. And then this past LSU, I was just like, oh, just be beat. That's your question. Yeah. Do you ever dream of winning the Heisman Trophy? Do you ever dream of winning the Heisman Trophy? So when did it start? No, I was, I was telling these guys earlier, I, um, no, uh, I, I didn't, and I don't know if that was, because I'm from South Georgia, and I went to 3A, and I walked on at UGA, and, you know, all these, you know, stories, and, uh, I don't know if I could grasp that I would ever be in a position to do so, or if, you know, I kind of think it's more, you know, it's a it's a it's a huge honor and it's very important. But to me, at the moment, it was you know I'm trying to keep my job. I'm trying to win this game on Saturday. I'm trying to do all this stuff. You know, like I, it's tough to worry about more than just that because that's that's tough to do. Um, so probably maybe a mixture. Stetson, you're uh, getting to know a guy that you'll be up against on the 31st. Sometimes fans think players are mortal enemies. Um, what, what will this experience be like, just getting to know CJ and vice versa? And knowing you'll meet the Buckeyes here in three weeks? Yeah. Um, you know, so far, so far we're, we're cool with the chat. Like, yeah, I, we don't really know him. I think yeah. I think it's hard to get to know somebody whenever I know Finch y'all are around. And, you know, we got to get out and you know, um, just be dudes. Yeah. Um, and I hope we get to do that. I, I really don't know. Um, but I'm excited. That's what, that's one of, the, one of the reasons that I'm super excited to come up here is just to get to know them. You know, hopefully maybe talk to the ball, maybe just get away from the ball. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. Um, but hoping for a dude moment. Yeah, just, just, just um, like you say, get to know These dudes are special dudes, you know, and anytime you get to meet a special dude, I think you should probably learn a little bit. What's your initial impression of Ohio State? I've only skimmed through the uh, Ohio State Michigan game. Um, but they're big, they're long, they look good in uniform. Um, I've, I've been impressed with, I don't know his name yet, number 12, I think he's safe. He, he, he runs really well. Um, but other, I mean, I haven't seen him. What about CJ? You talked about when you watch CJ. What have you seen from him from where you've had a bunch of play I've seen, you know, I've only seen him in really passing. Um, but he's very accurate. I think he, um, one of those that I noticed in the plays is just how he hits them in stride and on time so then they can do it. And I think that's, you know, it's a scary job of being a mixed magazine, being a mixed sports out of Atlanta, Georgia. State your name and read why you're here and why you should get the Heisman Trophy. Oh, I'm not going to do that last bit. Okay. Uh, my name is Stephen Bennett. I'm here at the Heisman Trophy. So, talking about being the of the team right now, playing in Atlanta again in the college football play. I think we're excited and, and you know, we're still hungry. Um, I, think, I think we see it as. You know, our, our season's not over. We're not, that's not what we came in this year trying to accomplish. And, you know, I mean, it is, but now it's not. Now that it is accomplished, now we've got another goal. And so, I think it's hungry. You know, there's no way to lose it. down the run all the time. They've got a, uh, they've got a team meet in three. And then they're going to run a little bit, a little bit. I think it's going to be interesting. I'm going to run on the main streets. Try to avoid some people. Maybe I have to get a trip to run again. Uh, you know, we're still hungry and we're excited to play Ohio State. The Ohio State doesn't happen very much. I think maybe once in 92 or something. And, uh, you know, we're excited to play Ohio State. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
think Herbie's talked about it a little bit too. What's the fine line of being stubborn and being committed? What, what's the positive toward for stubborn? What's the fine line there as a quarterback? You know, not being so stubborn. Right, in what way? Uh, you can be so stubborn that you throw into double coverage and get a pick, right? Well, then, all right, so then I think. Uh, like stubborn and. and um, can stubborn be good? Yeah. Yeah. And for me, stubborn is, I guess, standing for what you believe in. Um, and, you know, most of the time it's not, but in, in that sense of what, why I kept going, that would be what stubborn is. Um, in other senses, it's more of me just being a turdhead. Um, but I, I don't think it, it maybe it, it, it le leaks onto the football field, um, per se. You know, I think that would turn into more of a uh, confidence versus stubbornness. Um, but I don't think you can get into the, uh, I'm going to do me, I'm going to do me, I'm going to do me. That might not be right. right? So just seeing it, see what the see what the situation calls for. I think that's it. So you said that the girls were, uh, in, in your uh, speech, that people said don't go back to Georgia. Why did they say that? I think they saw it as a uh, roster filler spot. They're probably right. Um, but I think that's probably why. Stetson, we live in a microwave generation. Everybody wants stuff right now. What would you tell a young athlete who's chasing down a big dream that sometimes seems like a microwave? Yeah, dude. I mean, well, I, you know, I get like that too. Um, I am like that. What I'd say is... Start practicing little goals that you have to wait for. Wait for them and see how those feel versus the ones that come right away. And then build on that, build on that. Um, and then you start to understand what it feels like and that you can get more out of it that way. And then hopefully by the time you're big enough to do something, you know, not big but important, then you know what that feels like and you know how that looks. Since so go back to your decision to return, there was criticism of why don't you just go out on top? Why don't you kind of leave uh, as the king and the hero? Now being back here in New York in the Heisman Finals, is there a sense of validation of coming back this year in your mind? No. Um, criticism for wanting to come back. I don't understood that one. Not just... Maybe I understood it if they didn't think that I was good enough player. That's all right. But criticism to... Bet on yourself. Yeah. People are weirdos to me. Um, I, I don't think you should live your life that way. But um, what was the second bit? I don't know. Just like, does it, do you feel a sense of validation now that you are here and kind of those that criticize for coming for you coming back? Like, you accomplished more already just being here than you did last year. No, no, I wouldn't say validation. No. Um, because there's nothing for me to validate. I just want to play football and be good at it. You know? I didn't do it for anybody else. What did what did say? I'm sorry. Sometimes I can't hear. What did Todd say? Sometimes when, I speak low. <laughs> that's you. Um, what did Todd say when he said he was going to go to JT? Is that what you're talking about when you lost the job or he benched you? Uh, you? Well, Coach Smart delivered that one. Okay, so Kirby uh, talked to you. Can you talk me through that? Yeah, he was actually very, very nice about it. Um, because it had happened. You got hurt at the Florida game, and then. Well, I got I got hurt at the Florida game, um, and then came out and, and then got eventually pulled. The one went in. Um, so then, I mean, I could see it. I, I really didn't understand it in the moment. I was like, "Why are you talking to me? I know I'm benched." But um, he came in. It was very nice, and just you know, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna give a go with JT this week. See how this goes. And then obviously, the freaking Joker went for 400. And I was like, "All right, dude, you know what? Can give me a shot." Uh, but I went through 400, um, and you know, I was like, "Yeah, you know, that's what happens." Um, 
but it was all very at that moment I wasn't I, you know, I saw that hey we've lost two games that didn't happen so Stetson, do you remember uh, Caleb was talking about how you apparently hosted him on his visit to Georgia do you remember anything about that experience or about him uh, at that time no, nothing really about the experience. I think we just sat on the couch and uh, watched football. Um, it was me and him, and I think Carson Beck was there, actually, on CB. Um, but no, I just I just, I just, uh, just remember that it was, just, it was just super cool dude, you know, just chilling down to earth, and um, just a normal dude, and didn't really know much about him, but just liked him and knew, knew his heck of a player. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.